One way that a writer coach is going to evaluate a writer is they're going to start from the top and work their way down. So let me explain what that means and you can see how you would fare if you were being evaluated with this criteria. So I put together a special song that I'm going to perform for you. I've got a link to it at the end of this video, so I want you to keep watching. If you want to see me perform a song and probably embarrass myself a little bit, keep watching. I'll provide a link for you at the end of this video. So what do I mean by that? Starting from the top and working your way down. Well, we're going to start with the top of the rider. We're going to work our way down. So the head and eyes, that's where any rider coach is going to start at by evaluating a rider. And what we mean by that is, is that rider keeping their head and eyes up? So when you're on the training range, our tendency is to look down. We've got all these new controls. You know, a new rider is going to look down at these controls. They're going to look down at the front tire. They're going to look down at the cones. You know, it's natural. So a rider coach, right from the start, if you've taken the MSF class, you've probably heard a coach say, keep your head and eyes up. So you want to be looking ahead. And that helps us with three main things. First, it's going to help us with our sense of balance because we can get the horizon out there and it really helps us mentally, helps our, gives our brain a better picture of where we are in space and helps us with our balance. Just try walking by looking down at the ground and see how much more out of balance you feel than by looking ahead and you can see right away how much a benefit that plays us by keeping our head and eyes up. Second, it's going to have a big effect on our sense of speed. So not as much on a training parking lot because we're only getting up to 20, 25 miles per hour. But as soon as you get out on the road, if you're looking, you know, 10 feet in front of you or you're looking even worse, you know, down towards your front tire, your sense of speed is going to be really high, even at 30 miles per hour. But as soon as you're looking up and you're keeping your head and eyes out on the horizon, everything slows down because that pace is a whole lot slower and mentally it helps us relax a whole lot more by keeping our head and eyes up and third when you get out on the street all the bad stuff is out there if i wait to see it until it gets to my front tire it's too late for me to do anything about it at that point i want to see it while it's out on the horizon so that i can adjust on the motorcycle rather than reacting to it at the very last second. So the next area that a rider coach is gonna look at is shoulders. You know, riders tense up. It's a new thing. And anytime we're learning a new skill, we tend to tense up. So the shoulders, you want your shoulders to be relaxed. You don't want them up like this. You want them nice and relaxed so that you can move them around. And it's gonna help you be more relaxed and keep a lot of that tension from being fed back into the motorcycle and the bumps from the motorcycle being fed back into you. And that also comes in with our elbows. So we've worked our way from our head to your shoulders to our elbows. You don't want your elbows locked out like this. You wanna be in a nice relaxed riding posture. If I can flap my arms like a chicken, I know my elbows are relaxed. If I turn my arms or flap my arms and it looks more like this rather than like this, I know that I'm tensing up my elbows and that's going to add a lot of my tension into the handlebars and it's going to keep the motorcycle from being able to do what it needs to do and like i said all those bumps and feedback are going to feed back into you as you're riding so head shoulders elbows wrists we want a nice flat position with our wrist going to the hand grips especially over here on the throttle side we want a flat grip as we go to that throttle Reason for that is we roll on the throttle here. As soon as we roll off, we need to reach for that front brake. If I reach for that front brake, if I've got my hand or my grip up too high, I have a harder time getting to that throttle. And what happens if I've got my wrist up too high, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll inadvertently roll back on the throttle over on this side as I'm reaching for that front brake. If you roll on the throttle when you try to go to your brake quickly, that's a surefire sign that you're not having a flat wrist as you go to that grip. So now we've worked our way down to our knees and our upper legs. And let me lay this over on the side stand as we talk about this. So I bring my feet up here on the pegs or on the floorboards. I want my knees to be the, my point of contact, my primary point of contact with the motorcycle. My butt's in the seat. My knees are contacting that tank. 
that's how I'm holding on to the motorcycle. Not with the death grip on these handlebars. I want nice and relaxed upper body, but I can hold on with my knees. That way when I come to a stop, instead of tensing up right here, or I'm turning and all that tension is being fed into the handlebars, I can hold on to the motorcycle with my knees and that's going to help me relax my upper body as well. And like we said earlier, keep all of that feedback from the road coming through you. So it's going to smooth up your ride. So just think of your upper body as like a shock. You know, you're moving around, the motorcycle's moving underneath you, but your point of contact with that motorcycle is your butt and your knees and your feet. So let's work our way down to our feet. It's not as bad on a motorcycle with floorboards, but on a motorcycle with pegs, a lot of riders will tend to, you know, either move their foot too far up on the peg so that they're uh, hanging off the edge of it, the peg and, you know, or out to the side, which is a case for me, something I have to watch because I got bad knees. So sometimes it's more comfortable for me to move my feet out rather than keeping them in. The problem that that causes though is if you lean the motorcycle over and your first point of contact is your foot, the boot, your boot when that motorcycle leans over, what can happen, and I speak from experience, if you get into an aggressive turn, the pavement can grab your foot and pull it off of the peg. And, and when it happened to me, I was at a fairly high speed. It grabbed my foot and yanked it off. My foot hit the saddlebag behind me and I thought I broke my foot. So I learned a quick lesson there. Make sure you keep your foot up on the pegs so that the pegs or the floorboards are the first thing that makes contact with the pavement. And then you know you're at your lean limit. That's giving you a warning saying, hey, don't lean that any further because if you continue to lean the motorcycle, you can't lean it far enough so that it lifts the rear tire off the ground. And then you've got a whole other set of problems. So an evaluator, when he's watching a new rider, he's going to start from the top, work his way down, head and eyes, where are they looking? Are they keeping the eyes on the horizon? What about tension in their shoulders? Are their shoulders relaxed? Look at the elbows. Can they flap their elbows? Or are they getting a whole lot of feedback from the handlebars into the body of the rider? What's their wrist position look like? Are they comfortable, relaxed? Is there a flat wrist position going to the grips? What about the knees? Are they holding on to the tank of the motorcycle with their knees? Is that one of their primary points of contact? And then look at their feet. Are their feet up and out of the way? Are they on the pegs? If you're using pegs, are you using the ball of your feet on the pegs? Or at least the arch of your foot on the pegs, not getting way up on the, the back end or the heel of your foot. So how did you do? Next time you go for a ride, you can evaluate yourself by starting at the top, working your way down. Till next week, guys, it's Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.